fountain of living water, give to us a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Christ, that the eyes of our heart might be enlightened. Continue to empower our resolve to grow into better versions of ourselves. In Christ we pray. Genesis 24, verses 42 through 46 is our unison, unison scripture reading this morning. Again, we'll read that together. Genesis 24, verses 42 through 46. <clears throat> Excuse me. I came to the spring, and then it said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make successful the way I am going, I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes out to draw, to whom I shall say, please give me a little water for your jar to drink, and who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also, let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebekah coming out with her water jar on her shoulder, and she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank, and she also watered the camels. Do we have any children with us this morning? I would have briefly said a word to the children about how heavy things can be and asked them, what's the heaviest thing you could imagine? This is a dangerous thing to ask of children. And hopefully they would have come up with a good answer somewhere along the line that we could actually say in public and, uh, and then say, well, you know, can you do it alone? No. Well, you might need another person or more than one. Well, how could we do that? And then I would explain to them what a yoke was, because I do not think children know what yokes are, except that they are in the middle of the whites of the egg. So they could lift together. But we'll have to miss that this morning. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Father except, and no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal the Father. Come, come to me, all of you, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble humble in heart, and you will find rest for your weary souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. How are we to live today? Hmm. The world's complicated. It's complex. There are no easy answers. There's no easy answers today, and I don't think there was ever really any easy answers. There's certainly no easy answers to if you're reading today's headlines, which included in no particular order how the Chinese debt is affecting American society. Who knew? 
the moral quandary of saving African elephants. Murderous heat waves, yeah, we get it. Random shootings, four people in Queens yesterday shot by a nine millimeter pistol, a person with a nine millimeter pistol, from the scooter, his motor scooter. And cluster bombs for the Ukraine? In their original context, the biblical reading, these, these verses were, were specifically to those who were burdened, burdened not only by the oppressive empire that the Roman law had imposed upon the children of God, but also by the children of God themselves in the face of their rabbis and Pharisees, who saw the law as some sort of moral trickery in which there was to have been an absolute adherence to every, and you've heard this before, jot and tittle of the law. That is, all their T's had to be crossed and all their I's had to be dotted. It was, in fact, designed to get people through their lights, through their, the thicket of their lives. Life is hard. The law was there to help them. But then these, and I love this, well-intentioned people embellished the law until it became its own thicket. So they had a law, then they had another law, then they had laws about how to read the laws, and then they had another law about how to read the laws that the laws were being read about. Oh my God. Religious professionals, I'm one of them prided themselves on their observance of the law. But even they couldn't avoid all the infractions, and I can't. The common person, does that make you common? I'm not sure. The common people did not stand a chance of perfectly observing the law, or perfectly doing anything for that matter. It burdened them rather than helped them. And that's in the context that Jesus is teaching. He's speaking with these folks, people who are getting pressed from this side, pressed from that side, and pressing in from their own hearts. They're heavy laden. They're working hard. And Jesus says, well, take my yoke upon you. And they did know what a yoke was. Take my yoke and learn from me. You see, some of the rabbis had likened the law to a yoke, that wooden bar, a wooden bar that that fit across a team, usually two, oxen, donkeys, people, fit across them, and so that one of them or the other couldn't go in a direction that the master wanted them to go. So the yoke was decidedly for the people so that they could go in that direction or the oxen to go in the right direction. It was fitted across their necks. Now fitted across their necks. In the way back machine, way back in before, um, before Jesus' time, a yoke was simply basically a beam of wood, pretty straight, that went across and was laid upon the deck, if you will, the deck of the oxen's or the, 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 the donkey's shoulders, and it would, that would chafe the backs of the animals. It would chafe the backs of the animals as they were driven forward. But long around Jesus' time, long around Jesus' time, carpenters, And it's interesting that Jesus grows up in a carpentry family. 
Notice that if we just bow the wood out a little, if we just make this little bitty bow and then place it upon the animals, that would be far more comfortable, less chafing, and by the way, more efficient as a tool. So Jesus is talking and he says, you know, what we need is not just a yoke, but we need well-fitted yokes well-fitted yokes. It did provide the measure of control, and neither animal was free to go in that direction or that direction, but rather bound to the consciousness of the person, usually, who was driving the plow or the cart. It's a good point, I think. We, we cannot choose to serve more than one master, we've heard that. The yoke of the law is better than the yoke of the world. And lots of times the yoke of the world is far more prevalent than the yoke of the law. It's everywhere. And if you have one of these, it's really everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like, oh my God. It's like, but, but oftentimes, and I love this, I go, you know, I'm, walk, I'm walking and or driving in the street, and you see this. No. In the hands of the scribes and Pharisees, however, the yoke of the law became so burdensome that the people were giving up entirely on it. Jesus, not, Jesus does not propose that we go yokeless, although he would say probably to put down your phones every once in a while. A well-made yoke distributes the load evenly and even equally. A fitted yoke contours to the neck of the one bearing it. And that carpenter Jesus would know about that. Consider the advantages today of new technologies. Even this one. We don't have very many yokes these days. Haven't seen a whole lot of yokes. But forgive me for those of you who don't like sports. But I have considered the advantages of some new high-tech athletic equipment. A hiker, for example, can go much faster, much further, and more easily when equipped with well-engineered backpacks. Back in the old days, a backpack could have weighed 40 pounds. Now, they can weigh about 17 pounds. I can carry 17 pounds much further than 40. A tiny camp stove, they're about this big. Freeze-dried foods and a featherweight tent. Well, if you're not a hiker or a camper, consider the new advances in tennis rackets. They have titanium, what? Tennis rackets? They weigh about a couple of ounces, rather than those old wooden ones that were like heavier than, it's like, remember that? It's like, or golf clubs, skis. Running shoes. Running shoes weigh about three or four ounces these days. And they all help athletes not only run faster and do better, but they're actually breaking more and more records these days. None of this equipment, of course, allows for the athlete to win the game while sitting on the sidelines. You got to get in the game. But it does enhance the athlete's performance on the field. It just does. We need to get out there onto the field, the field of life, if you will. Jesus invites us to take up his yoke, to learn from him, which if we are to learn from Jesus, doesn't that make us disciples? Because that's what a disciple is. A disciple is a student. 
We're given access in Jesus to the finest equipment and the best coaching that we'll ever have. A yoke usually joins two oxen together to work as a team. And when Jesus invites us to take up his yoke to learn from him, he's inviting us to join with him on his team in the harness, to allow him to take the lead, to let him help us through the difficult places of life, to give him the opportunity to show us how it's done. Gently and humbly. That's right here. Jesus says, for I am gentle and lowly, that is humble, Gentle and lowly, humble in heart. Jesus taught. Jesus taught that the law, that the law, in fact, was meek, was lowly, was humble. In fact, he refers back to the the book of Numbers. You know the book of Numbers. It's our favorite one to read. But if you look in Numbers 12, 3, you'll find that Moses excelled at very few things except he was the most humble person alive, which I think is kind of not a really good thing to brag about. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I'm the most humble person. But Moses, you see, was the giver of the law. And if he was humble, the law that he gave was humble and lowly. And Jesus, you see, blessed. Blessed people with the law. He blessed the meek. Blessed are the meek, he says. Not the rich and powerful, not the strongest son of a gun on the, on the field, but the meek. Which makes no sense, really, that they would inherit the earth. A promise that seems, in fact, pretty counterintuitive. It appears, in fact, that the bold and the forceful must inherit the kingdom of earth. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom is heaven is for the meek. Jesus' promise is based on God's economy rather than the ways of the world, like from the financial times or something like that. Just as Jesus, you see, transformed the world by his meek submission to God, by dying on the cross, so also, by God's grace, those who submit their will to God will find themselves possessed by the power that transcends their natural skills and abilities. They get to go to camp more for the best possible equipment that they can buy. You will find rest. Rest. Interesting that yoke and work are connected with rest. You'll find rest for your souls. Jeremiah, back in the old days, had called ancient Israel back to its ancient paths. When he talks about that, the word that it gets translated in Jeremiah is the word respite. Back in the King James days, back when Shakespeare was writing, the word respite didn't necessarily mean rest. It meant to go back to, to go back to a state of grace, respite. We use that word now to indicate, well, you know, I need some respite from my, from my workaday world. Jeremiah meant that we need to get back to the original state of grace. We need to get back to God's love and God's goodness and the way God is constantly for us. Respite, you see, is finding our way back to grace but you've already done that this morning. You found your way back to grace. The original context referred to the burden of the Jewish law. 
These words were suggesting, however, that they extend to also our modern and postmodern and post postmodern daily weariness and burdens. We are weary today, even though we don't observe necessarily the Jewish law. I like a shrimp cocktail every now and then. But we're burdened by many other things. I am. Concerns about our jobs, marriage, money, health, children, if you got them, and even if you don't, you still ought to be worried for them. Security and old age. We all face tough choices. Many of us face a rather consistent criticism from our employers or employees or just our neighbors, our friends, or even ourselves. We all face opposition, and many, particularly the youngest among us, face bullying, not only on the playground and in the classroom, but on this thing too. Our burdens include our loneliness. Loneliness is one of the most significant killers in the United States today. There are people, you may even know some of them, who live in an apartment across the way or down the street from you and they have not even seen another human being apart from the TV set. They can't remember the last time someone touched them. Loneliness. And the thousand other things, the thousands of other things that burden us, including in no particular order racism or sexism, bias against our identity markers, addiction, mental illness, autism, and the list goes on and on and on. Jesus' concern for our burdens is as real for his concern for the law-burdened Pharisees of his day. His promise to the Pharisees and to the people sitting with the Pharisees and to us is also real. Come to me, notice this, all of you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. This is a universal promise. And God, in Jesus Christ, is capable of giving that promise and helping us to realize that promise. We can't do it alone. We need a yoke, and we need to yoke ourselves with Jesus. Jesus, you see, still does what Jesus did then. Jesus still gives rest. For my yoke is easy, he says, and my burden is light. It's not no burden. It's a lighter burden than the way of the world but it's a burden. The combination of an easy yoke and a light burden, the, no, the, of an easy yoke and a light burden make for a gentle journey. We may be looking for easy. I am. But the answer to the question that we began with how are we to live our lives, is simple. The answer is, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen.